Hello folks, hope you're doing well. It's just gone 10 p.m. on the 18th of July 2020. There you go. First picture is of my beautiful Molly Collie baby girl. And number one. Right, this one is Matthew 13. So Matthew 13 starts with Yeshua speaking to people about the seeds and how the seeds fall on certain types of ground. So I'll be doing an audio clip of that some point but um yeah this is a tricky one because i've spoken about this before about the seeds um what i said before was sort of true sort of not true but sort of true but sort of not true um what i basically said before about this thing is that if the church has been functioning the way it should be it's pretty much a case where no seed would really have had to fall on dodgy ground because that ground, all the ground, could have been made good. Yeah, because you can see people. Um, you can see that people are struggling with the cares of the world. And so you can then interject with that. And you can get close to them and you can help them. Um, and in a way, that's correct. In a way, that is correct. But also in a way, it's wrong. Um, because the majority of people, you know, if it's, but anyway, we're, we're, we're going with this episode. I, I can explain as we go why it was wrong. Also, one key point is that the disciples asked Yeshua, why are you speaking to the multitudes in parables? And Yeshua said, to you it's been given to understand. To them it has not. So to them I speak to in parables, to you I explain things. And then he goes on to explain what he's just said about the seeds. About you know, some seeds fall on um, on the pavement basically. One second first. Lucy, we jeez, oh, one second. Sorry about that, Lucy was just eating the bedding. Well, I've got our old duvet down there. We're about a duvet cover. And it's one of these cheaper ones. So unfortunately, as our nails get into the duvet, some of the material starts coming off. And she's... I don't know what she's doing with it. But yeah, sorry. I had to tell her off and <laughs> stop her from doing that because it's probably not good for them to eat that somehow. So yeah. Tis what, tis what, tis what. Anyway, yes, so some some seed falls on basically what you could describe as pavement. Um, some seed falls on rocky ground. Some seed falls on thorny ground. And some seed falls on good ground. That's what the multitude were told. Of course, the multitude are going to go, okay, whatever that means. Um, but then, then the Lord explains it to the disciples. But just before he explains it to the disciples... He then talks about what we later see. And he talks about the talent. That whoever has, more will be given. Whoever has not, whatever they have will be taken away. So, like the talent story. Those who made more, more will be given to them. Uh, the one who hid the talent and didn't actually make anything, what he had will be taken away. So, yeah. It's, it reminds me of that when the Lord is saying about that. So, yeah. But, yeah. So he just says that beforehand because he's talking about the multitude. And I don't know really what he's saying about the multitude don't have. I'm not sure what he's saying the multitude don't have. Whether he's, he's saying the multitude don't have a desire for him. Um, that don't, they don't have that because they're not really following him. They're just being led they're just going wherever the all goes and just happen to you know turn up sort of thing um whereas the disciples are with him all the time yeah um but so yeah anyway okay he goes on to say you know 
And this might be the pure explanation for it. But seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear. However, disciples. There are many occasions where disciples see but do not see, hear but do not hear. So, uh, um, I'm not really sure what separates at that stage. We're talking about Matthew 13. So it's an early stage, really, for the walk of the disciples with the Lord. Um, they've not exactly shown a lot at this point in time to show them as being above the crowd. Um, so that's why I'm like, well, how, how, why would you be saying that, Lord? That doesn't make an awful lot of sense. Now, can I point out one thing? Uh, the other day, I was making a point about, I think it was Matthew 11 or 12, where I said in that one that the way that all is speaking doesn't make sense. But the reason why I said that, because he went on and then spoke about, um, you know, when the demon leaves the house, cleansed and comes back with seven more, I'm like, well, why did you suddenly go into that? That doesn't make sense. There's no flow. I just want to point something out. I'm talking from the point of view that normally when you have a conversation with someone, there is a flow to the conversation. Now, we don't know whether things were said exactly like that, in that way. Um, what we're getting in Matthew is... The recollections of Matthew and Matthew is not giving you a full blown description just the important bit that's all we're getting in Matthew Mark Luke and John all we're getting is the important bits so the background any background stuff anything like that we're not getting just the things that are important so in the words of the Lord, sometimes they might not seem to flow, but that could just be because of the fact that um, yeah, the less important bits as in how he got from the A to B wasn't recollected as clearly, so therefore wasn't added or wasn't seen as important to what was being said. So therefore, because obviously, if you're going to have Matthew, Mark, Luke and John giving 100% accurate recollections of what happened over three years how big would those books be yeah those books would be absolutely huge three years worth every day so it's 365 days that's around about over a thousand thousand one hundred days basically that's the account from every day. As it happened, we're not going to get that. So forgive me for making a point about that. Yep. Um, I spoke to God about it afterwards and you know, realized it. Yeah, okay. Maybe I was being a bit harsh there. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway, the Lord starts talking about the about the multitude not seeing what they see or seeing but not seeing hearing but not hearing yeah and then he goes on to explain what he meant when he was talking about the the seed falling upon certain types of ground so i'll just play this clip that explains the parable when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now. He who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word 
and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Another pair. Sorry, that's just going to go on. Um, that was a clip from the Word of Promise audio Bible from Matthew 13. Well, the reason why I did that clip is because that explains it far better <laughs> and far clearer than what I probably could. Um, but yeah, interesting. Interesting. But that's why I was saying that when I was talking about it, you know, I was maybe being a little bit disingenuous on the situation. Um, as I say, I think really when you've got these people, if you've got a church that's functioning well, a lot of these people that weren't on good ground could be moved to good, good ground. I think that is the case. Definitely, I, I think that is absolutely the case. So, yeah. It's all relevant as to, you know, if the church is functioning well as it should be. Which, of course, and again, there's no proof that that is the case because we don't know because the church, certainly in my time as a Christian, has never functioned as it should do. So we then get more parables um, given to the multitude so that they wouldn't understand. Then it all goes to explain the, the tares in the wheat. Um, it's when the good seed is basically the children of God. And the bad seed is the, the wicked ones. I would say the good seed would be the spirit-filled born-again Christians and the bad seed would be the churchgoers. Because you have the churchgoers suffocate churches. Completely suffocate them. You know, with their old ways and their ways of you know, wanting to keep the Christianity and the church to a level where it's not challenging. It could never be offensive to anyone. It's not really going to change anyone's life. It's just comfortable. Comfortable Christianity. And it's like, well, okay. Uh, comfortable Christianity, as far as I know, isn't what the Bible is supposed to be about. We get to more of that, a good description of that in a sec. Um, but, yeah, the tears are gathered and thrown into the fire. Same as later on we see about the, the vine and the branches. And those that do not bear fruit will be cut off and thrown into the fire. There's a lot of things being thrown into the fire. We know that the fire is hell. So, yeah. I mean, to me, again, there's no reason why tears can't become good seed. With God, that is certainly a possibility. I mean, not all of them. I mean, you know, if it is a case where the church goes out of tears, then... I would certainly say that the majority of them will perish. They won't come along once the church is starting to be functional. They will leave. They will find themselves some sort of community center and go and do exactly there what they were doing in church. Which is cool. That's what they want to do. Go for it. So really, <laughs> from, from that point in Matthew 13... Or most of me is talking about the kingdom of heaven, what the kingdom of heaven is like, and that the angels will come and gather the good and the bad, and the bad will be thrown into the fire. Yeah, and the good will shine, and their glory will shine upon the earth. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it would be lovely to believe that, um, yeah, I said that we had this prophecy given um, just before Christmas and that said in a year you know, God's going to sort the church out and that would be good if that was what was going to happen what's being described in Matthew 13 um, 
if that's what we're going to get, fantastic, because we will then have a church that is functioning fully and glorifying God and, you know, all the stupidity within society that the light of God will be shined upon all of that and that will all vanish. It will have to because, you know, the sin of that will be revealed. Now, yeah, we hope that that would be the case. But uh, we don't really know. So, Yeshua at the end goes home to his own place, speaks in the synagogue. People then marvel but then get offended by him. And he then said, the prophet is not without honor except in his own home. His own bit, his, where he comes from. So, that therefore ends Matthew 13. There's a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> All right. One thing I will say is that the thing we get over and over and over and over again in the Bible, all the way through, all the way through, we get the good and the good seed. And the good seed bears fruit, bears good fruit, etc., etc. And those people will endure to the end and they'll be saved. Yes? Right. But then we get the others. The seed that is bad fruit. The seed that falls on bad ground. Yeah. The branch that isn't bearing fruit or good fruit. That gets cut off, thrown into the fire, they'll be nailing and wash and you know, gnashing of teeth. That's a common thing that goes through the books of these, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Through the words of the Lord, this is a very, very common theme. So, that's why I say the church, not teaching that side of things, is almost criminal when you think of it from a spiritual point of view. It's not actually helping the people in the church to be aware that there are consequences to their lack of desire to do things God's way, the lack of you know, oomph to you know see God moving and for them to do whatever is necessary for that to happen. Yeah. For there to be good fruit born and the consequences of that not being the case. Had that been taught, we might not be in this position with the church being so spiritually dead but anyway that's Matthew 13 you take care God bless and I will speak to you soon bye bye